Hello Pokemon enjoyers! I've made a few videos about speedrunning in the past that have explained fights that runners often have a hard time with, usually in the early game, and not much about the strategies that actually make the games a lot faster to complete. Today's video addresses what I think is the single most important strategy in all of Pokemon speedrunning, and the items that are essential to making it work. You've seen the thumbnail, you already know what's up. It's X items. The humble, tossed aside, quickly sold X item. The casual player's item pickup disappointment. So many of us totally ignored these in casual player's kids because we tried them and realized that they did not permanently improve our stats and immediately lost interest. For those in need of a reminder, X items are in battle items that change how your stats work for that battle. I say change how they work because the mechanics work a bit differently for each item in different generations, but we will come to that. A classic example is X attacks. Using an X attack in battle will boost your attack stat by either one or two stages, one in generations one to six and two stages in generations seven onwards. Stages refer to the level of change in a given stat during a battle. An X attack, for example, boosts your attack by one stage. To calculate the boosted attack stat after using an X attack, the game multiplies the stat by a fraction. In the case of one stage of attack, it's 3 over 2. So if your base attack was 250 and you used an X attack, the game multiplies 250 by 3 over 2 and your attack becomes 375. The fractions are different for each stage of attack you increase, but essentially goes up in increments of 0.5 times for each X item that you use, for a total of 6 stages. There are some more technical elements to how the games calculate this damage, but the Pokemon damage formula is complicated and other videos do a better job of explaining it than I would here. In most games, X items are sold at a handful of marts, are variably priced and can be used on any Pokemon. You can buy X attacks for 500, X defends for 550, X speeds and X specials for 350, and X accuracies for 950. There are also dire hits and guard specs, which are not really used all that much in speedruns in comparison to the stat boosting items. The relatively cheap price of X items and their accessibility throughout most games means that runners have lots of opportunities to make good use of them. So what do X items have to do with Pokemon speedruns? Most runs use a solo main, typically but not always the starter. In order to get through the game quickly, runners typically use a setup and sweep type strategy that relies on boosting your stats a whole bunch and then one-shotting every remaining Pokemon in a fight. This is a generalization and there are a whole variety of strategies involved in Pokemon speedrunning, but if there were a default Pokemon speedrun strategy, this would be it. Now, when I first learned about this, I kind of doubted it. Surely X items aren't that broken, there's no way you could really use them to get past every hard fight in every Pokemon game that fast. And I was wrong. X items really are that broken, and the routes for the speedruns are largely built around X items than the sweep strategy. Take the example of Rival 2 in Pokemon Emerald, which I've discussed in previous videos. Pokemon speedrunners would not have any shot at getting past Grovile if they did not set up using X attacks and then an X speed on the Slugma. The Marsh Tomp simply could not deal enough damage to two shot the Grovile, and without the two shot, you would simply die before you could win. This is true of many other runs where fights would be impassable if not for severely boosted stats. Looking at the notes for Pokemon Emerald, to use the same example, a world record route has you purchase no fewer than 39 X items, all necessary for difficult fights that would otherwise be very slow, or impossible to beat at that point in time. Pokemon Crystal has you buy 21 X specials just so Raikou can sweep everything comfortably. Pokemon Platinum speedrun only shops 4 times per some sets of notes, and one of those is solely to buy 20 X items. Heart Gold and Soul Silver are a little bit over the top as some routes recommend you purchase 99 X items to carry you through the run, but 
that's probably just because it's faster to hit down for 99 rather than it is to buy the specific amount of X items you actually need. The main point here is that X items are vital to the fast times of Pokemon speedruns, and God only knows how many hours slower they would be if it weren't for absurdly boosting your stats and steamrolling entire teams. Now, not all X items are equally useful to runners. With the setup and sweep strategy I described earlier, the emphasis is more on offensive setup using X attacks, X specials, and X speeds. Runners do occasionally use X defends and guard specs where it is necessary to be able to take a hit, but most of the focus is on increasing a Pokemon's damage output for fast KOs, rather than stalling out an opponent by buffing defenses. X speeds, I feel, warrant their own special mention. In some niche cases, outspeeding your opponent to avoid a drastically slower fight is really important, and X speeds can give you the edge. Again, in the case of Rival 2 and Emerald, you are very, very unlikely to be able to win the fight unless you outspeed the rival on turn 2, so an X speed is vital to your success there. In parts of the Pokemon Red speed run, outspeeding Alakazam is essential, as it can one hit KO your Nidoking with Psychic, and you do not want that. So yeah, X speeds are pretty important. I phrased my definition of X items carefully earlier because not all X items actually work the same in all generations of Pokemon. In fact, one X item is much more broken than the others in generations 1 and 2 because of how it works. X accuracies, which you might assume boost accuracy, do technically make moves more accurate. However, they don't work like other X items by multiplying the accuracy of moves by a fraction, but instead just make moves skip the accuracy check altogether. This means when you attack after using an X accuracy, moves cannot miss at all, not even with the 1 in 256 glitch, which is a glitch in generation 1 where all moves have a 1 in 256 chance to miss. X accuracies negate this altogether by just not checking accuracy. You might not immediately grasp the consequences of how this affects the speedruns and how they are routed. It dominantly affects Generation 1, as there are fewer opportunities to abuse it in Generation 2. But having no accuracy check at all, making all moves unable to regularly miss, other things can cause you to fail to attack, means that one hit KO moves are always going to hit. So, if you can use an X accuracy, you can always hit a one hit KO move. And the strategy for the latter half of the red speedrun hinges on this strategy. Once you reach Celadon City in red, you can buy the TM for Horndrill, which as a side note it's insane that it was a TM in generation 1, and 11 X accuracies, depending on the route that you're using. You then use your X accuracies and Horndrill to get past the game's most difficult fights with ease. These fights include most of the Elite Four, Giovanni and Sylph, some random grunts, and some gym leaders. The world record time for Pokemon Red, which uses a Nido King and the Horn Drill X Accuracy strategy, is 1.44.03. Most of the alt main times that do not utilize this strategy, Blastoise and Charizard for example, are at least 10 minutes slower it makes a massive difference to the run. While Red's quirky use of X accuracies is an exception to how X items are generally used, this level of time save is common across all Pokemon speedruns. There are some runs that minimally utilize X items, such as Black and White, but these are more the exception to the rule, as all runs before and after Black and White make great use of X items. They are the common thread tying main series Pokemon speedruns together, despite all the things that may separate them mechanically. The other aspect of X items that makes them critical is that they can make fights a heck of a lot safer. Some fights in Pokemon speedruns hinge on small chances to not KO Pokemon in one hit, and real problems can arise when you miss these chances. X items such as X attacks can make those ranges guaranteed and while slightly slower, make a dangerous fight into a very free one. Winona's fight in Pokemon Emerald is a great example. 
Winona's ace, Altaria, knows Dragon Breath, which can paralyze you and really slow your run down. It can also deal some decent damage with Aerial Ace and Earthquake if it is given the chance to set up with Dragon Dance. Setting up three X attacks means that Altaria is a range to KO in one hit, but with four X attacks, it is guaranteed to KO. The cumulative effects of using X items throughout a single Pokemon run is extremely palpable. There is one thing I should quickly mention. Some people will inevitably be asking why runners don't just use setup moves like Swords Dance or Agility to set up instead of using the X items. It's a fair question, and the answer is simply that most mains in Pokemon speedruns just don't learn these moves. Even if they did, it's somewhat more optimal to have access to four damaging moves and also stat boosting items than it is to give up move slots in favour of setup moves. You can just buy the items and have better type coverage. Of course there are exceptions to this, but generally speaking that is the trend. So that's X items, and how Pokemon speedruns would take way longer than they already do if we did not have access to them. Thank you X items, and thank you for watching.